Hello everyone, and welcome back to another, to another GIS lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to talk about the idea of a buffer. Of a buffer. So, quite simply, what a buffer does is a buffer creates an area from a given geometry using a specified distance, right? So to sort of put that in English, right, a buffer creates right, a buffer creates an area from a feature at a specified distance. And there are really three keywords in here. The first is area, and then specified and distance, right? And so what buffer allows us to do is it allows us to say, hey, I want to know about something that is within an area of something else. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take that something, I'm going to do what's called a buffer, so I'll, tr I'll create an area from that feature, and then I'm going to look at what was overlapped by that new area. Okay, I think some I think some examples might help here. So let's take a look at this set of two. We have two sets of points here. We have the the yellow points, which represent um, proposed locations of um, telephone poles, and then we have the green here that represent trees. So I'll just write that down. So we have trees represented by the green dots. And then we have telephone poles, or you could think of these if you'd rather they can be electrical poles or some sort of some sort of constructed item. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out for each of these different pole locations how many of these trees would we have to remove, assuming that we need to remove trees that are within 50 feet, right? So we need to remove trees within 50 feet of the of the pole of the phone poles and to be clear this is 50 feet not soft 50 feet right and so what we would do is we would use a buffer we would start at the point and we would create, I'm going to do this in blue, right? We would create a circle with a radius of 50 feet, right? That's 50 feet in all directions. And we would create, as best as I can draw, right? A circle with a radius of 50 feet around this point, right? So this circle, this is an area, right? I'm shading it in so that you know it's an area. So this is a circle. with a radius of 50 feet. Right. And the reason it's 50 feet is because we specified 50 feet, because that's what we were interested in when we generated the buffer. So this circle, this is the buffer. Right. This circle is a buffer. And we would do the same thing for this point, right? 50 feet. We would create a new circle. And again, part of this is my poor drawing skills, right? But these would all be 50 feet. <clears throat> right? And then we would do another one up here, right? 50 feet. And we would create a circle. Right? And again, these new blue features, these are polygons, right? So we took a point feature. Right? So in this case, right, for points, right, we go from a point to a polygon. Right? And this new polygon in specific in the case of points is a circle with a radius of a specified distance. So a polygon, which is a circle specifically, 
with a radius of the specified distance. Right. To recap, right, for this particular example where we're trying to find the, the trees that are within 50 feet of these proposed pole locations, what we did is we created a buffer, which is a 50-foot radius circle centered on the point. And I know my drawing doesn't do that complete justice, but the idea here is you have a point, you create a circle with a radius equal to whatever your specified distance is, and you get a new polygon, which is an area, right, that has a radius of that specified distance centered on the point. And then you can do something like within to figure out, or contains to figure out um, the tree situation. Okay, so that's how buffer works for points. And again, we're creating an area from a feature with a specified distance. Okay. Let's look at lines, right? Buffer for lines. Right. So let's imagine <clears throat> that we have some road construction, right? This is some proposed location for a road. And we're trying to figure out what we would have to remove from the surrounding landscape. Right, so we've got some trees again on the surrounding landscape. Right, we have all these trees on the surrounding landscape. Right, and so the question is, right, given this proposed road location, right, the question would be, right, how many trees are within are within let's say 75 feet go a little cleaner right 75 feet of the road And you can imagine why this would be important, right? Because not only when you build the road do you need to have space for the actual concrete that makes up the road, but you also have to have easements on either sides, maybe a sidewalk. When they're actually making the road, you need to have room to get the equipment in and out. So you're going to need to remove a fair amount of width, right? And so how would you actually go about answering this question? Well, you would use a buffer. But what you would do in this case, right, is you would look at the buffer would look something like this. So what we would do is we would look at the nodes, right? Because remember, a line consists of nodes and edges. And I'm going to do my best to put some nodes in here, right? It would look something like this, OK? And so I'm going to do the buffer in blue again. So what we would do is we would take this node here, go parallel to this line segment out 75 feet. Right, so this would be 75 feet. We would do the same thing on the other side, parallel to this line segment, 75 feet. Right here, we would go parallel to this line segment, 75 feet. Right, 75 feet. Again, down here, same thing, 75, 75 feet. Here, right, same thing, you kind of get the idea, right? We're, we're basically going parallel, we're creating parallel copies of these line segments, right? That are 75 feet off from the original. Right, that's all we're doing is we're creating parallel line segments that are 75 feet off of the original. Right, so this line here is 75 feet away from this line here. This line here is 75 feet away from this line here. We do the same thing, keep going. Right, this line segment is 75 feet. Right, this line segment is 75 feet, right? And again, so we're just creating 75 feet offsets on either side. 
right? and we can keep going until we get to the end here. Now at the end what we do is we go 75 feet and then we go perpendicular to that line and then intersect the ends. Right? So we would go 75 feet perpendicular connect up the ends. Right? And so what we've done here is we've created this new blue area here right? that has an area where every single edge of the polygon is 75 feet from the existing line segment. Okay? So at all points, this is 75 feet away from the, exist from the original line segment. And then again, you would do a within to figure out how many of these trees you would need to remove. Okay? But bottom line here, what we've done is we've gone from a line to an area, right, again, polygon, where each edge of the, of the polygon is 75 feet, in this case, 75 feet, but it would be the specified distance, right, away from the original line segment, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully this concept makes sense, that we have a line, we want to figure out something that's within a certain distance, we generate an area or a polygon based on that distance by offsetting right, that distance on either side of the line, connecting everything together to create a closed polygon that is now a buffer of that line. Okay. So the last example, let's, go, let's talk about buffers from areas, buffers from polygons. Right, buffers from polygons. Okay, so for this example, let's say you're installing a new pool in your backyard, right? And you know that you're going to need to have a certain area around the pool that's free of any electrical wires or anything that might be impacting your ability to install the pool. Right, so this thing right here, this is your pool. And you know from the installation instructions that you have to have clear ground within 10 feet of the pool. Right. So you know that every, within 10 feet of the pool, you can't have anything in the ground, on the ground, under the ground that would impact your ability to have this pool. So what you're gonna do is just like with the lines, or the line I should say, and we're gonna make this one gray, right? Is you're gonna take this line segment, offset it 10 feet, right? I'm just taking the two edges, the two nodes of that line segment, going out 10 feet, connecting them up, right? So this line segment here, this edge, is 10 feet parallel to this edge, right? Do the same thing here, right? 10 feet, right, 10 feet. Right. This line segment here is 10 feet offset parallel to this edge, right? And then we just connect them up at the end. Right, same thing over here, 10 feet, 10 feet, parallel, connect up. 10 feet, right, 10 feet, parallel, and connect them up, right? Now this new gray area here, right, this gray area here, represents the new area that is the size of the pool plus 10 feet in every direction, right? So then you could do another, again, you could do a select by location based on this area to find anything you have to remove, okay? But the idea here is that you're going from a polygon, right, from an area, polygon, polygon, right, to an area, polygon. But this new area is bigger, right, because we've buffered out that specified distance. Okay. So 
So hopefully this makes sense, this idea that for points, you do a circle with a radius of the distance to create a polygon. With lines, you offset each line segment in the line by the specified distance to create a new area as a polygon. And for polygons, you buffer outside, right? You go away from the center, every line segment that, or every edge that specified distance and connect them up to create a new area that is bigger. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.